Thank you for those who voted for me. And um, as you'll recall, my talk is about cats. So cat hair can be used as a forensic tool. It was first used in a criminal trial in 2013 in the UK. And this was following this murder which took place in July 2012, where the dismembered torso of a man was found on a beach. And it was found wrapped in the shower curtain and sealed in the bin liner. There were eight cat tears which were recovered from the shower curtain, and the police wanted to know whether these could have come from the suspect's ca pet cat named Tinker. So in this talk, I'll go through um, how this analysis is done and how you might approach it now thanks to nanopore sequencing. So domestic cats are a very popular um, household pet. They're found in about a quarter of homes in the UK. And if you have a cat, you'll know that their hair gets everywhere in your home and on your clothes, and so they can be easily transferred. So these shed hairs are frequently recovered from crime scenes, but they are of limited value in visual analysis just because there's so much variation even within a cat. There are profiling multiplexes which exist for individual identification of cats but these are usually dependent on nuclear DNA, which you're not really likely to recover from hair samples. So you then have to depend on mitochondrial DNA, which is less discriminating given its maternal mode of inheritance and lack of recombination, but you're more likely to recover mitochondrial DNA given its higher copy number and greater stability. So traditionally, you Sanger sequence a 402 base pair region in the non-coding and so more variable control region. And this is the green bar at the top. On either side, you've got these repetitive sequences, RS2 and RS3. Another feature about cats is that they have quite a large NUMT, where under half of the mitochondrial genome has transferred to the nuclear genome and is repeated 38 to 76 times. So once you've Sanger sequenced this 402 base pair region, you'd normally assess the frequency of the profile within a relevant population database. Um, and this is dependent on the geographical location, so the frequencies can change. In worldwide, there have been 12 universal mitotypes identified, A to L, and in the UK, just over 90% of cats have one of these 12 universal mitotypes. Over 60% of cats worldwide have one of four common mitotypes, A to D. And at the University of Leicester, they built a cat population database using 152 cats, just using this 402 base pair region. And in the pie chart, you can see the frequencies of the different profiles. In the case of the cat hair recovered from the shower curtain, it matched that of the suspect's cat. And they were very lucky that it was quite a rare profile. It's the BUK1, which is the second smallest uh, red slice. If it had been in the A in blue or the C in green, then it really wouldn't have been quite so useful. So there has been evidence of increased discrimination by sequencing additional segments of the mitochondrial genome. And there have been studies which have looked at sequencing additional bits of the control region and cytochrome B, for instance. So we wanted, in our first aim, to build a new database, um, looking at the additional variation which we could get by sequencing the whole mitogenome of 93 cat's blood samples. So we did this using two overlapping amplicons, and you can see the primers um, shown in the pink and green arrows, and this would also allow us to avoid the NUMP. We also sequenced seven cats using Illumina sequencing. And because we wanted to apply this approach to cat heads, which are more degraded and you need shorter amplicons, we wanted to use the variation identified to design primers for the whole mitogenome amplification from cat heads. So for the 93 cat blood samples, we used barcoded primers, and we used different combinations of these uh, together with the native barcoding expansion so that we could sequence eight cats per native barcode. We sequenced this on an R9 flow cell and mapped the cats to the cat mitogenome reference and called the variants. So there was a really good agreement between the Illumina and Nanopore cats. There were 10 indels found at homopolymeric regions in runs of 5 to 8 nucleotides, which we excluded. And when these were present in the protein coding regions, they led to frameshift mutations. 
There's also a high length and sequence polymorphism seen in the repetitive sequences of RS2 and RS3, which are these short tandem repeat blocks, and which has previously been reported. We identified 422 polymorphic sites um, outside the repetitive regions, and this is in contrast to the 25 variable sites which they've seen in the 402 base pair control region from the 152 cuts. So through this process, we'd aligned our cats to the Sanger sequence reference sequence, which was generated about 25 years ago. And we saw that it's got quite a long branch length, indicating the presence of errors or private variants. And it's got 42 such sites, which are unique to the reference. So from the 402 base pair control region, from the 93 cats, we've got three unique um, profiles. But in looking at the variation across the mitochondrial genome, we've now got 60 unique mitotypes. And we've been able to reduce the number of cats in the largest group from 25 cats down to four. Um, so it's, we were really able to subdivide the most common mitotypes. We now wanted to apply this approach to the cat tears. And to do this, we need to use shorter amplicons. So we took into account the identified variants designed primers to cover the whole mitogenome in 60 overlapping amplicons with an average length of 360 base pairs. So this consisted of two multiplex e multiplexes, each of 230, sorry, each which had 30 non-overlapping amplicons. And then we amplified and sequenced matched blood and hair samples from two cats where the samples were collected in 2001. And we sequenced it again on the flow sound, processed the data in much the same way. So we were able to sex successfully recover the complete mitogenome sequences from the blood and hair samples. And from the um, circos plot, if going inwards, got the labeled mitogenome, the RS2, RS3, and NUMPT indicated, the 60 different amplicons, the read depth for the hair in uh, blue and the blood in red, and then in the innermost tract, we've got the variants called in the long-range PCR data in black, which matches that of the variants called in hair, which is shown in blue. And in red, we've got the variants called in blood, where the numpt is prominent, so that's why we see these open circles. And the numpt is an ancestral sequence of the mitogenome, which is found in several cat species. So we... Because we designed this multiplex approach for degraded samples, we were able to apply this to a missing cat case where a cat had gone missing and around the same time the owner had found a cat jawbone and wanted to know whether this jawbone could have belonged to their missing cat. So we extracted DNA from this jawbone and from, hair sam from some hairs from the um, missing cat's male offspring. We got the complete mitogenome sequence for both, and in this case, they matched, indicating that this jawbone was likely that of their missing cat. So using nanopore sequencing, we sequenced the whole mitogenomes of these 93 cats, and this allowed us to distinguish 74 different haplotypes uh, from 13 originally, and reduce the frequency of the most common haplotype from 26 to 4%. We developed a multiplex which could be used in forensic cases with degraded samples. And in the case in the murder which took place in 2012, even though in that case they were very lucky that it was quite a rare profile, we'd now be able to subdivide this even further. And in most cases, you would expect to have this uh, quite rare profile. So I'd like to thank everyone in this list, especially my supervisors, um, Mark, John, and Celia. And thank you all for listening.